Hi, my name's Leslie Banks with Curvy Lines Art School. Today, I'm going to show you how I painted this cute little donkey. Now, uh, here's the photo that I uh, used as my reference. To start with, I'm just going to look at the shape of uh, the donkey's head and just sort of rough it in, not worried about the lumps, bumps, or dips, or valleys. I draw slowly, I draw lightly, I make sure I know where I'm going. I analyze the line before I actually draw it. I look at the angle, I look at the length of it. When I'm drawing, before I start the line, I'm already planning where I'm going to finish it up. And I don't always do it right, so that's why I use my eraser. I when I um before I erase, I always figure out how I'm going to change it first. When I put a new line in, I use my old line as a reference. So I look at my drawing and I say, okay, my line needs to be over this way a little bit. So I just nudge it over and then I erase the wrong line. I find this technique really, really important because I can get the shape looking much better just by um, not being scared, just drawing it, knowing that if it's wrong, I can change it. Sometimes I have to change it a lot. Sometimes I don't have to change it at all. But it's important to keep changing it until it's uh, the way you like it. And again, there are many styles in art, so if you're not going after realism, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as your picture. When I do cartoon work, which is really fun, I usually look at a photo and then I exaggerate. For example, of course, when you draw donkey's ears, you would draw the ears quite a bit bigger than what they are in real life. You exaggerate the features in cartooning. But with realism, what I look is I look at my picture, I look at the photo, and I look for differences. And then I change it to make it look more like the photo. When I'm adding things like the eye, I have to line the eye up to the ears and, and the mouth and the nose and see where they are compared to each other. So I see this eye below the one ear, maybe below the other ear as well. And if I was to draw a line straight across, it lines up to the forehead and I look to see the distance how far it is above the nose how far down is it from the ears and I try to duplicate it and again with the eraser I can nudge things over as I see sometimes it's hard for me to notice the difference and um, at those times you might want to put your image uh, in a mirror, just put it up to a mirror. It's like looking at your picture for the very first time in a mirror. And uh, you get fresh eyes and um, yeah, you can see what's wrong and then you can change it. You look at your picture and you're going, oh my goodness, his nose should be a little bit more curvy. So you curve your line a bit, then you erase your, your wrong line and you go back and forth. You look at your drawing, you look at the photo, Another thing that's really important is, yes, as an artist, you're allowed to change it. I do that a lot, but in this one, I'm going to keep it pretty close to the photo. I'm going to take some stuff out of the background, which is very distracting, and I'm going to change the color a little bit. Ready to paint now. Oh, there goes the cat. I've got my palette set up. I've got my uh, red, yellow, blue, black, white. And I've made my orange, purple, and green, and brown. And so I'm ready. I've got some brushes I like. I've got my water. I've got my rag. Got to make sure I've got brushes I like. I've got to have a pointy brush, a smudgy brush, and a good brush for, for doing a wash. So I'll mix up a color. And I'm going to start with uh, the nose. So I'm going to mix up a... Uh, grayish color on the cool side so cool as in it's closer to blue green or purple instead of uh, yellow orange or red I do like to work with warm and cool paints I like to put the paint down then I like to smudge it so I don't have any hard lines working away on his nose there. I do want to keep it soft because this was a really sweet donkey. 
a really soft nose. So I'm going to smudge the paint in and um, put little dark spots put dark spots where the dark should be and make it light where it should be light. Shadow grade, grade 8 from dark to light towards the sun except when there's like the hole in the nose and the mouth and it gradates pretty much opposite. It is darker closer to the light and lighter as it goes away from the light and that makes it look like it goes in. I make sure that I make the mouth look 3D and I'm doing the side of the jaw and I do try very hard to make every plane have a different tone. That makes it look very, very 3D. I just dab the paint in and fairly slowly look at the picture and um, where it's dark, I add dark and where it's light, I keep it light. And if I've made a mistake, I can always make things lighter by adding white over top again. Sometimes my paint gets too thick because this is acrylic paint and it dries out over time and so I might add some water every once in a while just to keep the paint nice and thin. I'm actually working on matte board which is really nice because it soaks in. That's the way, that's what I like. But I find every artist has a different favorite way, different favorite media, different favorite paint. These are definitely my favorite paints. Very liquidy acrylic. Gonna mix up um, another dark color here and um, give it a nice broad stroke. So I'm going to be on the warm side this time, black with, uh, with brown in it. And I'm going to do the, the whole donkey. <coughs> I'm going to paint uh, the whole thing. I do love to put like a layer of paint over everything and then I add the tones a little bit later. And I put the paint on and then I smudge the edges so that I don't have a sharp edge. I don't like those sharp edges. I'm always touching the edges with my brush and softening the edges. So that when I put a new layer of paint over top, um, it looks more natural. And I'm going to paint the whole donkey this way, the ears, the neck, uh, everything that is the brownish color compared to the gray color of his nose. And I um, like to do my brush strokes so that I don't see a specific direction. I'll go one way and then I'll brush over top of it the other way. Make sure I don't go outside the lines. Staying the lines is fairly important. But if you go outside the lines, it doesn't really matter. And t t just so you know, this is just one way of painting. This way, I'm putting a light coat of paint on and then I'm going to put another layer on over top. I like that way. I like it a lot. I do it a lot. But I do other ways a lot too. Sometimes I dab my paint. Sometimes I have thicker paint. Sometimes I do like a watercolor style. Sometimes I do a very thick oil painting style. I like to do everything. Now I'm mixing up a darker warm color and I'm using brown black and I think I've added a bit more blue to this brown than the last brown. And I'm going to do all the dark areas starting with his eye. I'm going to be very careful with the eye. I really have to concentrate because I don't want to mess it up. I look at the photo. I look at my painting. I paint a line. I have a very pointy brush. And um, I'm just dabbing the paint in very carefully, really looking at the shape of the donkey's eye, being very, very careful. Now I'm going to smudge it in. Smudging it's important because it keeps my line a little bit loose. So if I need to crisp it up and snudge it over a little bit, it's easy to do when my lines are soft. I'm going to crisp his eye up a little bit, and that's looking not too bad. And I'm sorry guys, I missed a section of this video and I jumped ahead a little bit, but I just added some dark, not that pretty easy to figure out. And um, now I've added a cool color, it's a little bit on the blue side, and I'm going to work on his mane now. And uh, cleaning my palette, giving it a bit of a white wipe, uh, mixing white with blue and black. So a very great, cool color. 
and I'm wisping in his mane. He's got a very cute little mane. It just sticks straight up. It's a very adorable little donkey. I'm just touching things up here and there, a little bit on his nose, a little bit here and there, just to make him look a little bit better as I see fit. Using your artist's intuition, what needs to be done, what needs to be fiddled with, fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Smooth the line out so it's nice and soft. Put one layer of paint over top of another layer. Add whites where the light area, put it dark in the dark areas. Just do one layer over top of another and slowly build up your layers. And the more layers you have, the more 3D it is. I guess the hardest part about painting is actually knowing when it's finished. It's definitely not finished because it doesn't have nearly enough contrast or enough little magic in it or twinkle in his eye. So I've mixed up another darkish color and I'm just going to darken the dark areas. In his mane I'm going to shade it again shading its darker opposite and bottom of the light. Every bump has a shadow. So his mane is full of 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 bumps of hair, little clumps of hair. So I, I shade the bottom of each clump of hair, going from dark to light, dark to light. That's all I do. Then I'm gonna just darken the darken the dark areas going right over top where I painted before, this time going darker. A lot darker. It needs to have a lot more contrast to give it more interest. Another layer of paint. Now, because I've, I'm putting my second layer of paint on, um, if I did it wrong the first time, I can change it a little bit. So you'd have to look and you have to always be thinking, do I like what I've done or do, don't I like what I've done? If I don't like what I've done, I can shift it a little bit. And I'm always smudging my paint edge so it's not a harsh edge so that it's easy to slide over with a new layer of paint over top. And again, just darkening up the dark areas, keeping the other areas light, adding white over the light areas, tapping it in. I'm going to start adding a texture of his fur. And when I'm adding a texture, I have to really worry about direction. I have to paint the direction that the fur grows. And along his chin, I'm just going to do little dots. And when I'm doing his uh, forehead, I have to make sure that um, my little brush strokes go away from the eye. And just doing little dots over his forehead. And looking at the photo, seeing where it's dark. Looking at the photo, seeing where it's light. I switch back from warm colors to cool colors just dabbing here and there almost playing with it a little bit you almost get into a relationship with your painting and it almost tells you what needs to be done but I know I need to darken these ears up because I even started painting those and the top of his ear is dark because it's physically dark and so I added another warmish dark color and really making the contrast more obvious. Dark in the dark spots, light in the light spots. Dabbing here and there, creating texture, looking at the photo, looking back to the painting, adding things as I see them, going by my rules, what I've learned, gradating if it's a curvy surface, if it changes directions really quickly, then it um, changes tone very quickly. This part of the painting is the part I really like because I don't really need to think much and I just sort of paint with my intuition. I do like to use lots of colors and mix colors up and dab my paint and I do what I think needs to be done and it's really hard to say exactly what I'm doing because it's so instinctive for me and I can't really say the reason why. Oh dear, unfortunately my camera went a little bit blurry here. I feel so bad. So the next part of this video, it'll be a little bit blurry, but you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. 
And when I'm painting, I always sort of use um, a warm color and then I usually change it to a cool color. I usually work layers and layers upon layers with the shaded areas. In the highlight area, I sometimes need to add white to make it uh, whiter, but I usually try and keep the white. I don't work as much on the white areas as I do on the dark areas. The dark areas, I find it gets very, very rich and, and a lot of depth to it. When I put a uh, warm, warm layer on and then a cool layer, so like a warm layer would be a brownish layer of paint and a cool layer would be a bluish gray layer with some black in it. Mixing paint is a lot of fun and I have a whole video on mixing paint so if you'd like to see it check out my website at curvylines.ca a little plug there why not and my last little bit of painting is just putting one layer over top of another if I like it I leave it if I don't like it I change my technique a little bit this painting in total probably took me an hour to do. I think this video is approximately 18 minutes. So I've definitely speeded subsections up. I speeded this section up a lot because it's a bit blurry, but you'll see the end product. Um, I'm not gonna show you um, how I painted the person. I just wanted to show you how I painted the donkey. But the person is where I go through the same things. I draw the outside line. I put darks in the dark areas. I put lights in the light areas. It's all about finding a rhythm. If you like it, you leave it. If you don't like it, you paint right over top of it and change it. There, with all that fiddling, I think my little donkey is done. And this is the finished painting where I've added the person. So my favorite media is uh, teaching people. So if anybody would like to learn, you can come join my classes. I do them in person if you live in Owen Sound, Ontario. And if you don't, I have my classes online, curvylines.ca. And curvy spelled E-Y.